Hi gang, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a pleasant Sunday smoke. And on this pleasant Sunday smoke, lots to talk about, lots of things going on. Let's get into it. First of all, I am smoking a little bit of Savinelli Doblone d'Oro. I just recorded my review for this blend. I've been smoking it for about two weeks. Still have a lot left, because this is a 100 gram tin. There's a lot of tobacco in here. Um, I had some interesting opinions, I would say, on this blend. Look forward to that review posting this Wednesday. Second, second, thank you guys all so much for your response to, I, I guess, first of all, the Patreon intro video that I posted on Wednesday, and then for checking out the Patreon. Again, like I said, I don't want anyone to feel obligated. I don't want anyone to feel coerced in any way, but a lot of you ask for a way to support the channel. And I am aware of the controversy that is sort of, uh, Patreon is sort of embroiled in right now. Um, several people mentioned that in the comments to that video, but basically it's the, the best option I could find at the moment. And I can totally understand if you don't want to support Patreon. Um, I would hope that maybe if you want to support me, that would supersede your hatred of Patreon. But again, don't, don't worry about it. It's fine. I love the fact that you're watching. I love the fact that you're engaged, that you comment on the videos. Um, that's good. That's nice. You write into hashtag ask stuff and things on Twitter. That's more than enough. But for those of you who are looking for a way to support the channel, you can go to the Patreon link. It'll be in the description below. And I've already had just ridiculous amounts of generosity pouring forth upon me from you guys. And it's really great. It's amazing. Um, we will be going through some of the names. If you're a $25 a month subscriber on Patreon, you get your name mentioned on the channel or on the show, which is exciting, I guess. Um, we're going to do that at the end. We'll do some shout outs. But I just wanted to thank you guys all again for that. That's really cool. And I don't want to keep like belaboring the point or anything and mentioning Patreon all the time because I know that it'll annoy some people. But um, aside from like the shout outs at the end of the episode and maybe just, you know, this is brought to you by the support of people like you on Patreon. That's pretty much all we'll talk about that or we'll say about that. Um, third, a lot of people well, uh, several people in some of the comments and in some emails have been asking me what kind of car did I get? Because if you've been following along, you'll know that I got in an accident, got T-boned in an intersection, someone ran a red light, smashed my truck. Um, there's some insurance snafu going on. I've got a lawyer involved and all this nonsense and everything. So I wasn't able to get any money paid out yet anyway. Hopefully that will change. But I had to go ahead and buy another vehicle. And I mentioned that I did get another vehicle. And some of you would, would like to know what it is. Um, it's not that new, but it's nice. It's in good shape. It's a 2009 uh, Volkswagen, well, Golf in Europe, but Rabbit in the US, or at least it was a Rabbit from like 2007 to 2010. And then I think they changed it to Golf in the US. So it's a little hatchback, a zippy, fun little five cylinder hatchback, uh, 2.5 liter, I think. And I like it a lot. It had. 75,000 miles on it. Um, and I went through the Carfax on it and everything. And basically it was one owner and they did every single scheduled 10,000 mile servicing at the dealer exactly on time. And like anything that you could possibly imagine in terms of maintenance was done to the vehicle. So it was in really good shape, like impeccable. I think there was one tiny little uh, chip in the windshield that had already been filled and there's like the most minuscule little dent, like just tiny little dent in one part of one of the quarter panels, but it's great. I love it. Um, I'm enjoying zipping around in a little hatchback again. I've always liked small cars, kind of zippy little cars. And uh, yeah, I like it. Maybe I'll show it to you. So there you go, my new car. I love it. Um, next. I know you guys hate this, some of you, but come on, the Seahawks are in the playoffs. So it's time for a quick Seahawks update. Okay, so everyone said that the Seahawks were gonna suck this year. It was gonna be a rebuilding year. They were gonna go four and 12. They wouldn't make the playoffs. They would be horrible. Their defense was gonna be in shambles. The Legion of Boom was over. The offense was gonna suck. And here we are, they're 10 and six. 
and they're in the playoffs. Fifth seed in the wild card round. And for me, I predicted an 8-8 eight and eight season, I think, at the beginning of the year, because I guess I was listening too much to the analysts. But now here they are. They're 10-6, and six, they're in the playoffs, and it's hard not to hope. But we have a performance like last week against Arizona, the worst team in the league, where they barely, barely managed to eke out a win at home. I know they were, they were messing with the offensive line a lot. Russell Wilson got sacked six times. And they were moving people around, and I think, you know, because of injuries and stuff, and maybe they were just trying something out because they figured it didn't matter if they lost that game. Seahawks update over. Now, for the next item of business, hold on. Mm-hmm. Oh, I take a sip of coffee here. Oh yeah, it's good. Still warm too in my clean canteen insulated thermos mug. I made this this morning. Um, next. I've had some questions from people asking, what do I like to watch on YouTube? And I think I've answered in the past talking about channels that I like to watch. And uh, I don't know, two or three weeks ago, I mentioned that I had been watching a documentary series on YouTube called The Smash Brothers, which seems really odd. It's a documentary basically all about the competitive scene that built up around a game that came out in 2002, a video game. But it's really fascinating, really interesting. I've actually shown it to people who don't care about video games at all and they found it really compelling. Um, and I actually went on the video again. Uh, I guess there was like nine parts in the series and someone from this channel had commented saying that they were there because I had mentioned it on the show. So thank you for going and watching. But I was trying to think of other things that I watch on YouTube. Recently, I've been watching a ton of content by a channel called Funhouse, and it is F-U-N-H-A-U-S. Um, I don't know that I can recommend it necessarily, and I don't really know how to describe it, but that's what I've been watching a lot. It's a bunch of people, or several people, who mostly play video games, but the video games are usually sort of secondary to them just sitting around and talking. It's almost like listening to a podcast, except there's gameplay on the screen at the same time. Um, a lot of their humor is very irreverent. Uh, a lot of it is very like not politically correct at all. Um, but I found it interesting and uh, I think they're cool. I think you should check out Funhouse, perhaps. I enjoy them. But now it is time for hashtag ask stuff and things. Remember, if you have a question for me and would like it answered on the Sunday Smoke, Tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag ask stuff and things, and I will do my best to answer. This first one is a rather long missive from <clears throat> at John or at blah, 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 John Smith at Flemhead. Um, I can't do the Flemhead voice because it's a very long message and it hurts my throat. But here we go. <clears throat> Not to put down pipe smokers, but cigar smokers seem to have a much better grasp of the concept of tobacco terroir. Now terroir. To me, I've always heard that in relation to wine and wine tasting. So it's, I guess, with my limited knowledge, uh, it's supposed to be basically the physical effects of where a grape is grown, like the soil quality and the climate and everything. And that can relate to pipe tobacco and cigar tobacco as well. Um, the final taste of a Cuban Monte Cristo No. 2 made in 2017 can be monumentally different from one made in 2018, even though the combination of leaves used may be exactly the same. The difference, of course, is the weather changes in the growing season and the fields where the tobacco comes from. And yet, you occasionally hear from a pipe smoker expressing his displeasure that the blend he smoked 63 years ago is not the same as the tin he bought yesterday. Well, no shit. I'm always pleasantly amazed when the taste and performance of a tin of pipe tobacco is close to the one I smoked from the year before. To me, besides the continual changes in regulations, the reasons pipe tobacco blends change so often is that the manufacturers just can't get similar tobacco to the, blends, to the blend that was successful for them in the past. 
Of course, I'm talking about the non-aromatic blends with no flavors added and minimal casing. It seems that it was easier in the past for the pipe tobacco manufacturer to discontinue a blend and start a new one or sell the name to a different company rather than listen to the complaints that the blend doesn't taste the same. And even when the blend name is sold, people are still griping that it isn't exactly like it was before. Why is that so hard to understand? Well, this is interesting, John Smith. Um, I don't, I think that's kind of painting with a broad brush. I don't think that all pipe smokers are ignorant of these facts. Um, I think that, I, I do tend to notice that cigar smokers are a little more, I won't say pretentious, I kind of want to say pretentious, but I won't say pretentious about, it, it's sort of like a sommelier or whatever when you're at a wine tasting or something and they're like, oh yes, I, I taste the, the pine and the, the fungus in the soil in which these grapes were grown. Um, and yes, that definitely makes a difference. I mean, the reason why oriental tobaccos taste the way they do, they're a varietal that is grown under very specific soil conditions. They're often starved for moisture. It's, it just, it makes a difference. It definitely does. And I definitely agree with you that um, year to year, you're not gonna get the exact same quality or quantity of tobacco. Um, so that will make blends different. I think people are kind of aware of that. I also know there's a good article by GLPs. I can't remember exactly where I saw it. It was probably just on his own website where he talks about the fact that pretty much every big blend, every major pipe tobacco blender is going to have some toppings and casings, even in a blend that is supposedly more natural and not an aromatic blend. And they put those toppings and casings on to try to um, make their blends taste more consistent from year to year. That's just kind of a fact of life. Um, and yeah, I'm aware of that. I think a lot of people are, but it's, it's a good thing to point out and a good thing to keep in mind for sure. Okay, this next one is from Haim at Haim8587538. He says, would you consider making a guitars and things video in which you show us your guitars and talk about your past music endeavors and how they influence your life today? Um, I've had variations of the same questions several times in the past. Maybe, I don't know. I, I'm not gonna be like, hey, here's a band I used to be in. Let's listen to some music and do that. I just, eh, I don't really wanna do that. And then I'm not, I'm not like a, a good guitarist. So I have no trouble speaking extemporaneously in front of you guys because I am I can do that. It's like not an issue for me. Even if some of the things that come out of my mouth are nonsense, I can still sound like I know what I'm talking about and I can, you know, I can speak to a camera and seem pretty natural. Um, I'm not gonna sit there and like, hey, I'm gonna play a song for you. Cause I don't know, that's just, it's a little more specific and a little more personal to me, um, maybe. Maybe I'll show you some stuff. I've got a guitar that I really love. It's probably my most prized possession, um, my Rickenbacker guitar. But uh, I don't know, I'll keep that in mind. This next one is from Tyler at Tyler94421877. He says, now wait a minute. He usually asks me not to speak in a, oh no, somebody else has asked me not to speak in a robot voice. So Tyler gets a robot voice. Have you ever considered getting an EA carry pipe? They're even a better system pipe than Falcons, in my opinion. Have you had a great new year? Hope you had a great new year. Hashtag ask stuff and things. Well, thank you. Happy new year to you as well. Um, I've heard of EA carry pipes. Are they the ones that have the, what is it called? Like the magic inch or something? There's a little thing in the stem or the shank. I don't know a ton about them. I know they're, they're pretty low priced, aren't they? Around like 30, 40 bucks, something like that. Um, which doesn't necessarily mean that they're bad or anything, but I've never had the opportunity to grab one and uh, I can't say that I know too much about them. Maybe someone in the comments below can express their opinion. All right, um, this one is from Ismail Tahir. He says, hello Bradley, can't get mason jars where I am. Are those good for storage? And he links to a picture for me um, where he shows a particular kind of jar and what's your advice on keeping tobacco moist for long term since I got mine a little dry? Thanks a lot. We've touched on this in the past and I brought some visual aids with me. Um, and it doesn't hurt to go over it again because, you know, not everyone's seen every video. He was showing a picture of a jar like this. We have a little rubber gasket and I, 
I think like years ago, when I was first really getting into the hobby, I was using these. They don't keep your tobacco very moist. Um, they will dry out when you leave, or your tobacco will dry out when you use a jar like this. When I'm doing long-term storage, I use a canning jar. This is a Kerr canning jar. I bought a flat at a grocery store um, years and years ago, and I haven't run out yet. Um, they're cheap. They have a wonderful seal because they're made to hold preserves and things that you can for years and years and years, almost indefinitely. They are pretty much completely airtight, and if you put something in here, it'll pretty much stay at the moisture that you put it in, in the jar. Um, so that's what I use for long-term storage, and I highly recommend it, Kerr, K-E-R-R. -R. Um, and as far as trying to moisten something up, this little humidifier button is something that I use quite a bit. If a blend isn't super dry, and you don't have a ton, like just a normal tin's worth, you can cram it in a jar like this, put one of these buttons in, you soak this in water. People say you should use distilled water. Eh, I don't know if it matters all that much unless your water's super hard. Um, and then I pop a pin like this, or a button like this in there, and it only takes a week or so. And for the most part, the tobacco will be at a good moisture content. If it's super dry, you may need to do something else. You know, there's the whole, put it in a Tupperware container, moisten a paper towel, you know, let the humidity develop that way. But for me, a smaller amount, in a jar about this size, a humidifier button like this works well. You can get these at smoking pipes and other places like that. All right, next question from Dan Hooha2 at Dan6617044. And he says, please do not read as a robot, just your normal voice. Okay, Dan. <clears throat> normal Bradley voice. Would you consider a series of tobacco reviews that are side-by-side -side comparisons, e.g. HH Old Dark Fired versus Irish Flake, maybe finish with a list of other related comparable blends? Thanks, Dan. It's a good idea. Um, I tend not to re-review things, so if I've reviewed Old Dark Fired and Irish Flake, which, I've had, which I have, I tend not to want to re-review those same blends as a comparison of the two together, but it's not a bad idea, and I will keep that in mind. Next, Pipe Wizard at Pipe Wizard One. He says, Hey Bradley, have you heard about the new Sheraton Dunhill replacements? Thought you might be interested to know there's an Elizabethan mixture match. Also, Brebbia Latakia Flake is back in stock and limited supply. Better be quick if you want to snag it in. Winky emoji. Um, I've had this question several times. I think I've answered it on the channel. The same as with the um, K and K blends that were being produced in the Robert McConnell series that were supposed to be at least in the spirit of the Dunhill blends that were off the market. Um, if they come to the US, I will try them. They have not yet, and they may never because of our stupid FDA, but we shall see. All right, gang, that's the end of hashtag ask stuff and things. But before we go, I would like to thank our $25 Patreon supporters. And those people are these. Joshua from Edinburgh, Glenn, Kevin Moore, Derek Burgess. Thank you so much for your support. Remember, if you do want to support the channel, you can go to the Patreon link below. If you do not want to support the channel, that is totally fine. We love you here. We love you watching. We love you commenting on the videos. That is more than enough for me. But until next time, until we meet again, I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a Pleasant Sunday Smoke. Go Hawks. I'll see you later.